you found a stain. Now what? How do you know if it makes you need it or not? First, just to clarify, we're talking about stains that are found externally. If you found the stain on a badika cloth or on something internal, then it's treated much more strictly. Also, if you're not sure whether this is a stain or a flow, then I think you should check out the video that we have on stains to learn more about that. If you found the stain on toilet paper, that's also its own halachic discussions. You could check out our video on that to get more guidance. Okay, so now we have our stain. Let's try to evaluate our stain. If one of the following halachot applies to your stain, then it does not make you a nida. So number one, what color surface was the stain found on? If it was found on a color surface, even a pastel color, then it does not make you nida. If it was found on a white surface, an off-white surface, then we need to ask, what color is the stain? So take a look at the stain in sunlight, a little bit shaded with your hand, and if that stain does not have the nida color in that, in that lighting, then it does not make you a nida. So what is a nida color? Well, red, shades of pink, and black are nida colors. Whites and yellows are not nida colors. What about browns? So we go according to the view that lighter browns with no reddish tinge, uh, lighter browns that are similar to coffee with milk or lighter than that are not nida colors. But darker browns or browns that are mixed with red might make you a nida. So that's something that you're going to have to check out on. So let's go on to the next question. On what type of surface did you find the stain? If the stain was found on a surface that is not susceptible to tuma, which is ritual impurity, then it does not make you a nida. For example, a stain found on the shower floor does not make you a nida. There are some other surfaces that are not susceptible to tuma, such as the toilet or the toilet seat, but it's a little bit more complicated in those cases, so I recommend that you check out our video on stains that are found on toilet paper or on the toilet. Also, we go according to the view that disposable panty liners and pads are not susceptible to tuma. So stains that are following on those do not make a woman nida. Obviously, if the stain is slowly turning into a flow, please check out our video regarding flow versus stain and see if maybe it no longer is regarded to be a stain. Still unsure? So let's figure out what is the size of your stain. If it is the size of the grease or smaller, then it does not make you nida. So what is the size of a grease? It's about the size of a circle of 90 millimeters in diameter, similar to the size of a penny. But since it's a little bit complicated to measure irregular stains, you could take a dime or a shekel if you're in Israel and see if it covers each stain. That's right, on any surface except on your body, we measure each stain separately. If it's clear that the stain is covered by the dime or the shekel, then it does not make you a nita. If it's slightly larger, it's best to ask a halacha question regarding that stain. And in general, if there's a likely source that the stain came from as opposed to coming from the uterus, such as if coming come from a cut on your body, then it does not make you a nida as well. There are some Ashkenazim that are more stringent on this point, and that this will not apply during the first three days during Shiva Nikim. If not one of these halachot apply to your stain, then it is best that you ask a halachic question in order to clarify the situation. But if even one of these halachot applies to your stain to rule out being nida, then you are not Anita from the stain that you saw. So next time that you find a stain, make sure you ask yourself these questions before you decide that you're Anita from what you saw.